They say a preacher's job is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. Hope a lot of you aren't feeling too afflicted today because the gospel passage we just heard isn't meant for a lot of comfort for 21st century Christians. Last week, I reassured you that even though you're left out, different, don't understand, do wrong, afraid, Jesus loves you. This week, the tables are turned. We know that Jesus loves you, and a question is posed throughout this passage, do you love Jesus? There's a tendency in public life these days to domesticate Jesus, that he is all about being nice, never offending anyone. That, oh, that Jesus, you know, he loved the kids. He wouldn't rock the boat or challenge the status quo. And if that's your image of Jesus, these words might seem a bit harsh. Here Jesus is telling, telling us that following him will have people calling us names. It will create discord in our family and in the world. And that following Jesus requires taking up a cross and losing our life. Does that sound like your experience as a Christian? Have you left your family to be part of our congregation? Have you ever been called names for loving Jesus? For a lot of us, the story is more like our parents raised us to know Jesus or our friends invited us along or we met Jesus at church camp. We grew up in a loving church family that might have had a few speed bumps along the way, but by and large, we were educated, nurtured, and loved in our faith. By and large, for most of us, our friends are all Christians, or they are at least not hostile to Christianity. By and large, when we have taken up a cross to follow Jesus, it has mostly been from a place of privilege. By and large, the cost of our discipleship is pretty low. In a country that embraces and privileges Christianity, where we can worship whenever we feel like it, in a pretty safe part of Topeka. Now, I'm not saying these are bad things. It's a great gift to be able to meet whenever we want, to be able to talk about our faith and what my church is doing to freely invite people to join us for a Christian day camp, or to watch Frozen in July, or to the summer sampler Sunday school classes. But we need to recognize that our situation is certainly different from the disciples' situation, the one to which Jesus is speaking here. And it's certainly very different from the real persecution that Christians face in Egypt, Palestine, China, and other places around the world Places where people risk losing their lives, literally, to follow Jesus. So what have you lost in your journey to find Jesus? What has your discipleship cost you? What does it cost our church to be faithful in following Christ? As followers of Jesus, we are expected to constantly be learning, and us Presbyterians are good at this, learning from the Bible, learning from each other, learning from God's movement in our lives. The early disciples that Jesus was speaking to were learning and growing, and they were experiencing a bit of conflict in their lives as they chose to follow Jesus. Reverend Thomas Long reminds us of four essential facts during conflict that we can glean from this passage. And I think that in the coming months, they are important to remember as we navigate the Presbyterian way of discipleship. The first one is that the Spirit will be present and will never abandon us. As Jesus tells us not to be afraid twice in this passage... We can cling to the presence of the Holy Spirit as a way to find courage. It is tempting to be paralyzed by the fear of losing, losing family, losing your reputation, losing a fragile unity, 
losing institutions or jobs, losing the ability of people liking you. There's a lot to be afraid of losing. Yet the Holy Spirit can move us from paralysis into action, from fear to peace, from losing to finding. Second point that Reverend Long makes is that suffering is not wasted, but is in fact a testimony to faith. When Jesus tells us that we need to pick up our cross, he's not telling us to seek out suffering or that God wants us to suffer. He's pointing to the reality that following Jesus is a way that will probably bring sacrifice and struggling. When we follow Christ, believe it or not, we might be called names. People might leave us or withdraw their money or support. As we struggle to navigate our lives together faithfully, our suffering can in fact testify to the conviction of our belief in following Christ. Connected with the previous points, Long says that even in the midst of hardships, nothing, nothing can eradicate the gospel or destroy God's loving and watchful care over the faithful. Jesus reminds us that as we proclaim our love for him, so too he proclaims his love for us. Jesus reminds us that even though our bodies might go away, no one can kill our souls and our lives are in God's hands. No matter what the future holds for our church, the gospel will stand strong and God will continue to love us and guide us. Psalm 86 that Alex read, ask God to give us strength to preserve our lives because we are devoted to God. Finally, in conflict, Reverend Long says that family disruption might take place because allegiance to Jesus causes crises of loyalty and forces a decision. Following Jesus who brings a sword instead of peace means that all of our other loyalties, all other commitments might need to be cut off in the name of Jesus. And I'm talking about...